Hey everyone, this is Scott here again with another video to help you learn how to trade, invest, and master your finances so you can apply that knowledge in the real world and multiply your money. And in today's video, I'll be giving you a high level introduction into the option Greeks. Now the Greeks are a more complicated and mathematical concept in regards to options, but I will say up front here that understanding what these things are and how they work, and most importantly, how to use them while trading options is going to be absolutely paramount to your success as an options trader. And that includes whether you are trading options like myself, specifically if you are an option seller, or if you're doing something completely different, does not matter. If you wanna be effectively trading options, you must learn and understand what the Greeks are. But don't worry, because like I said in this video here, I'm gonna be breaking them down in a super clean and simple fashion, so that by the end of this video, you'll have a great foundation to go forward with. And so before diving in here, I do wanna say, as always, if you are interested right now in taking a deep dive into options, options trading, and stock market investing, and all that good stuff, please check out my courses on Skillshare. I've been teaching on that platform for over a year at this point. Skillshare is a lot like YouTube, except the content on Skillshare is geared solely towards the purpose of education in the form of online classes. And in my courses, you will see a lot of the detailed research that I have done using real stock market data and graphs, spreadsheets, and computer programs that I have written to help simulate and prove the concepts that I am teaching. And I provided some links to some of the more introductory courses of mine in the description of this video below. Now you will need a premium level membership with the Skillshare platform to watch my courses, but if you do sign up for that kind of membership with the links provided in the description of this video, you'll get an absolutely free two week trial. And during that time, you can watch all my courses on Skillshare for free. And then once your trial has ended, it's only gonna cost you a few dollars a month to maintain that membership. And you'll get to see all the future courses that I had planned ahead. Skillshare is super affordable. You'll get a ton of value out of it. So again, if you're interested, please check out those links and join the thousands of students that have already taken my classes. And so now in regards to the Greeks, before you can actually understand what they are, I think it's best to understand where they come from. And specifically, the Greeks are derived from a rather complex mathematical equation that's called the Black-Scholes Option Pricing Model. And as I'm sure you can guess by the name, this equation is quite literally used to price the theoretical value for either a call option or a put option. And this equation was developed back in the 1970s by three economists, namely Fisher Black, Myron Scholes, and Robert Burton. And as I said, the Greeks are simply derived from this model. They're basically partial derivatives of the Black-Scholes option pricing equation. And simply put, all they do is tell you how the price of an option will change, whether it's a call option or a put option, relative to a change in something else. And so the four main Greeks that you need to understand to be a successful options trader are delta, theta, vega, and gamma. And if those sound familiar to you, that's because these are Greek letters, which is why, of course, this whole thing is called the Greeks. But each one simply represents how the price of an option will change relative to something specific pertaining to that Greek letter also changes as well. So for example, the one that I find the most simple to understand would be delta. And I'll show you here in a minute on my trading platform, but these Greek values can be very easy looked up for any individual option contract, right? These Greeks, like I said, tell you how an individual call option or a put option, how the price of that option will change when something else changes. So when you go into the option chain in your trading platform, there should be a way to see delta, theta, vega, and gamma for each of those call options and each of those put options. And in particular, when you do look up the delta for a particular option, that value, that delta, will tell you, of course, how much the price of the option will change, but specifically for a $1 move in the price of the stock. And again, this will all become a lot more concrete when I show you some examples on my trading platform. And so now moving on to theta, Theta will tell you how the price of an option will change with the passage of time. One of the things that you must understand about option pricing, and this comes directly from the Black-Scholes option pricing model, is that simply with the passage of time, as you get closer and closer and closer to the option expiration date, that alone will slowly decay or deteriorate the value of an option. And so that's why theta is also referred to as time decay. And when you look up the theta value for a particular option contract in your trading platform, that number will tell you how much the price of the option will drop with the passage of one day. And this time decay process is rather slow for the majority of the time span for a particular option. But as you do get closer and closer to the expiration date, the time decay will start to accelerate. And this time decay acceleration as you near expiration is one of the main reasons why I personally prefer to be on the short side of options, why I prefer to be selling them, but more on that to come in future videos. And so next we have Vega, and Vega is a bit more complex to understand conceptually, but 
Vega simply means, again, it describes how the price of an option will change for a 1% change in the implied volatility for a stock. And so what is implied volatility? Implied volatility is simply the market's expectation of where a stock will be at some point in the future. It's typically quoted on a one-year basis and as a percentage. So for example, if you were to look up the implied volatility for Apple stock, you might see that right now it is 30%. And so that would mean as of right now, one year from today, the market is expecting Apple stock to be either up or down from where it's currently trading at by 30%. And so it's important to keep in mind that this implied volatility number refers to either an up or down movement. So it's basically just the expected range of where a stock will be at some point in the future. And conceptually speaking, that's all it means. So in the case of our example here, if the implied volatility number for Apple were to change by 1%, either drop down to 29 or increase to 31%, the Vega value for a specific option contract on Apple will tell you how much the price of that contract will change if that implied volatility were to move by 1%. And this implied volatility number can change very frequently. Right? As I said, it is simply the current market's expectation of where a stock will be at some point in the future, but based on what's happening in the market, what's happening in the world, and what's happening with that particular company, that expectation can change on a whim. And so that covers Vega. And then lastly, here we have Gamma. And Gamma is a bit different because this Greek will tell you how Delta will change when the stock price changes by $1. And so Gamma is basically a second order partial derivative of the Black-Scholes option pricing equation. And it's still very important to understand and keep in mind because there is this thing called gamma risk that starts to present itself as you get closer and closer to expiration. And I will make a future video taking a deep dive into gamma risk as a specific topic. But simply put here, it means that the delta of an option contract will become a lot more sensitive and start to move around with a lot greater magnitude as you do approach expiration. And the gamma of an option contract will describe that. And so that's a brief overview of what the Greeks are and a little bit of how they work. And now we're gonna jump over to my trading platform and I'll give you some concrete examples. All right, welcome to my Thinkorswim trading platform here. And just continuing our example from this video, this is a one year price action chart of Apple. And so specifically, we'll be taking a look at the Greek values for some of these Apple option contracts. So let's head on over to the trade tab here. And then here is the option chain for all the option contracts that are currently available to trade for Apple. And so let's go into the March expiration contracts, which expire in 54 days. And I'll scroll down here a second. And in case this is the first time you're seeing the Thinkorswim trading platform, or the first time you're seeing an option chain like this, on the left-hand side here, these are all the different call options that expire on March 19th. And on the right-hand side, these are all the put options also expiring on March 19th. And then down the middle here in this column, these are all the different strike prices that you can choose for any of these call or put options. So as an example here, let's take a look at the 150 strike call option right there. And so you can see for this particular contract, there are a lot of different numbers and metrics that you can look at. And you can add many, many more depending on what you would like to see in the option chain. And you can see the names of each of these columns right up here. So we have the bid price in this column, the asking price in this column, so for this 150 strike call option, the bid is $4.80, the ask is $4.90. So going right in between, the fair price for this option would be right around $4.85 per share. These numbers are quoted on a per share basis. And of course, since option contracts are typically tied to 100 shares per contract, you gotta multiply these numbers by 100. So in reality, if I wanted to buy or sell this contract, it would cost about $485. And then going over to the left, these are all the different Greek values that I was just talking about. In this column right here, these are all the deltas for these call options. In the next column, we have the theta values for each of these call options. And then we have vega and gamma. So let's look first at the delta for this 150 strike call option. And you can see it's quoted as 0.36. And once again, these numbers are quoted on a per share basis. So you will have to multiply these numbers as well by 100. So the delta for this option here is 36, which means for a $1 change in the price of Apple stock, you can see right now it's trading for about $139 per share. So if Apple stock were to increase to 140 or drop down to 138, the price of this option is going to change by $36. And then for another example, let's look at the 130 strike put option here. 
and you can see the delta for this contract is negative 0.3 or negative 30. And so one question you might be thinking is why is the delta for this put option negative and the delta for this call option positive? And the answer to that simply has to do with the very specific technical definition of delta. As I said earlier in this video, delta is simply a number that will show you how much the price of an option contract will change for a $1 move in the price of a stock. And yes, that is absolutely true, but delta is specifically defined as indicating how the price of an option will change for a $1 increase in the price of the stock. Now, even though it's specifically defined in that way, whether the stock actually moves up or down, the delta value that you see here will still affect the price of the option in the same amount. So even though the definition of delta is associated with a $1 increase in the price of a stock, you can still use the delta value to show you how the price of the option contract will change for a $1 decrease in the price of a stock as well. It is ambidextrous in that way, but because of that specific definition, that's why the delta for call options are positive and negative for put options. Call options increase in value when the price of the stock increases. That is simply how call options work. And so if Apple stock were to increase in price by $1, then looking at the delta here, the price of this option contract is going to increase by 36 bucks. That's why the delta here is positive. And so then conversely, when the price of Apple stock falls, when it decreases, that's going to decrease the price of all the call options. And so then all you do is you attach a negative sign to this delta here, and then you can read it in the same way. For a $1 decrease in the price of Apple stock, then the price of this option will decrease by $36. So like I said, the delta is ambidextrous. Whether the stock moves up or down, the value stays the same. It's simply the signage, whether it's positive or negative, that's going to be different. And then for put options here, when a stock increases in price, all put options decrease in value, just how put options work. And so this means if delta is defined or is specified with a $1 increase in the price of the stock in mind, that means here for a $1 increase in the price of Apple stock, looking at the delta here, the price of this put option is going to decrease by $30. That's why it's negative. And then conversely, if Apple stock were to fall by $1, that would increase the price of all these put options. So you would just take the opposite sign here, basically just get rid of the negative, and then you would read the delta in the same way. For a $1 decrease in the price of Apple stock, the price of this put option is going to increase by $30. And so if that was a bit confusing, don't worry about it too much. The more you deal with options, the more second nature the Greeks will become. And for me personally, I don't even really care about or look at the individual signs of the deltas. For example, when I talk about the deltas for either calls or puts, I usually just say the 30 delta call or the 30 delta put. I don't say the negative 30 delta put. And most other option traders do the same thing. And so next up, let's look back at the 150 strike call option again. And let's look at the theta value for this contract. You can see it's negative 0.07. So multiplying by 100, that'd be negative 7. And so this means, right, that when one day passes, the value of this contract is going to deteriorate a little bit. And specifically, 24 hours from now, it's going to decay by about $7. And so in that light, hopefully it does make sense why the theta values for both the call options and the put options here are all negative. Because for all options, both calls and puts, as time marches forward, the value of the contracts are going to decrease. So that's why these are negative values. And then next up we have Vega. You can see the Vega for this contract is 0.2 or 20. And like Delta, Vega also does have a more specific definition. The way Vega is quoted here will show you that for a 1% increase in the implied volatility for Apple stock, this is how much the price of the option contract will also increase. And that's one thing I should mention here before continuing on. As implied volatility expands, as the market's expectation of Apple increases or becomes more uncertain, that is going to inflate the prices of all options, both the calls and the puts. And then conversely, as implied volatility contracts, as the expected range of where Apple will be a year from now starts to narrow, that's going to deflate or decrease the prices of all the options. But because Vega, as I said, is specifically defined relating to a 1% increase in the implied volatility, that's why it's quoted here in a trading platform as a positive number, both for the call options here 
and also for the put options. And so this means, just like with the delta, for a 1% decrease in the implied volatility, you simply attach a negative sign to the Vega value here. So if implied volatility contracts by 1%, then the price of this option is going to decrease by 20 bucks. And then for this put option here, you can see the Vega is 19. So for a 1% increase in the implied volatility, the price of this contract is going to increase by $19. And then conversely, for a 1% decrease in the implied volatility, the price of this contract is going to decrease by $19. And then finally here, we have the gamma values for each of these contracts. And for this call option here, we can see the gamma is 0.02, or just two. And so again, this means for a $1 move in the price of Apple stock, this is how much the delta of this contract will change by. And specifically, for a $1 increase for the price of Apple stock, the delta of this contract will also increase by 0.02, or two. So if Apple goes from 139 to 140, this call option here will increase in price by $36, and then the delta of this contract will increase to 38, which means that if Apple were to increase in price again by an additional dollar, then the price of this contract would increase again by $38. And then delta would change again by whichever amount that gamma shows here, and then so on and so forth. And then of course, conversely, for a $1 decrease in the price of Apple stock, you simply attach a negative sign here. And that would mean if Apple falls from 139 to 138, the delta of this contract is going to decrease by two. And you'll see the same thing over here for this put option. The gamma values for both calls and puts are both positive, and that's because the delta for put options are negative. And so as an example, again, if Apple were to increase by $1, then you simply take negative 0.3, the delta here, and you add to it 0.01, and that would give you negative 0.29. So that means for a $1 increase in the price of Apple stock, the delta here is going to fall to negative 29. And that should make sense here because the further away you go from where Apple is currently trading, the lower and lower the delta is going to get. And by lower, I'm referring to the absolute value here. Obviously, negative four is technically greater than negative 30, but in absolute terms, four is a lot less than 30. And then conversely, if Apple were to decrease by $1, you simply attach a negative sign to the gamma here, and then you add it to the delta, that would give you negative 31. So if Apple falls to 138, the delta of this option here is going to move to negative 31. Again, also making sense because now this option, the strike of this option will be a little bit closer to where the stock is trading. And as you get closer and closer to where the stock is actually trading, the delta, in absolute terms at least, is going to increase. And so there you go. I hope this gave you a good demonstration and some good examples of how the Greek values can be looked up in a trading platform and then interpreted for any individual option that you're looking at. And I do understand that the Greeks are a pretty technical and complicated concept. So please, if you do have questions or if you need clarification on something, please drop a comment on this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. All right, so that concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you are interested in taking a deep dive into options, options trading, and stock market investing, please check out my Skillshare courses. Links in the description of this video. And lastly, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, drop a comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And make sure those notifications are turned on. I'll be dropping new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and you don't want to miss out. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.